Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step episodes number 31. I am Glenn Gers. I am spending uh, these afternoons every Monday through Friday, if I can, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, walking you through my process of writing a script, a TV pilot from beginning to end, from first idea to completed script. And I'm also here to let you ask me anything about the art and craft and business of screenwriting. If for some reason you have a life and you can't be here live, I don't mind. You can still ask me questions. You can go to writingforscreens.com and you can uh, click on Contact Me, which is just all over the place on almost every page. Um, and when you do that, I will get the message. If for some reason you'd rather just do it here, you can do that here in the comments below this very video. Write a comment, ask a question, it will rocket to me through the interwebs and I will get it and I will either answer right there as a reply or I will hold it and talk about it here. Um, so, hello Wolf Powers, welcome. Um, we are going to start working on uh, the Untitled Podcaster Killer Project. Um, <laughs> except I've been interrupted by Sammy the cat. Uh, I, I should not have left the door off open. Um, so the untitled Podcaster Killer Project. We are going to go into the outline because there is still stuff here that I have not figured out. And until I've got all the... Uh, all the beats worked out. Uh, I keep going over it and over it and over it. Um, forgive me. We're going to just move Sammy out. Sorry about that. Uh, going over and over and over the uh, outline until I feel like I have a pretty good sense of who everyone is and what <laughs> cats... Cats are usually a value add, you know that is true. And um, and and he, <laughs> Sammy may be back. We may just do that. Um, hello, 99th Precinct. Hello, everybody. Um, basically, the the job of the outline is to give you a sense that you know what the scene is about, who everyone is, and what they're trying to accomplish, and what you as a writer need to get accomplished in the scene. So as I go through the outline, I find myself with these little pink areas where I have not really figured it out. Um, and what I do is just pick a one, choose one that I haven't looked at in a while, and start to answer those questions. So yesterday, uh, we were working at the end, the last few scenes. So today I went back early on to the beginning when we first meet uh, the crime group. Um, and I came up with a name, Crime Crowd, or The Crime Crowd. Um, I believe that, uh, I, I did more research on the, the names, the possible names of um, web sleuth type sites. Crime Crowd does not appear to be in existence. Um, and so I am grabbing it for the moment. Um, we will consider this YouTube video as my claim to copyright on the idea of crime crowd or possibly the crime crowd. Um, now, uh, this is what I realized is, first of all, there's a bunch of basically pay sites um, where they expect you to, to get a monthly subscription or to have a membership in which you are paying for the opportunity to join the community. I don't think these people, these characters, uh, are going to be in that. They might be in a Facebook group, but to tell you the truth, I just want to stay away from Facebook groups because of Facebook and why jump into the, the maelstrom of opinion that is people's thought on Facebook, whether or not it should or should not exist. 
um, Shudra should not have power. So I just thought, okay, let's not have it that. Um, there is this site. It is a, uh, an actual site called Web Sleuths, um, which is really uh, old fashioned, old school bulletin board, just looks like crap in my opinion. <laughs> but, um, but it seems to be really big in terms of people getting, uh, communicating there. So what I thought is, okay, this is a group within a bulletin board like that. Um, and they regularly meet this, this sort of subgroup because when I went to these, uh, the web sleuths, everybody has their own particular crime they are interested in. They'll, they'll, a group of people will be hung up on one or another particular killer or crime or topic. Um, so what I thought is we'd have this group be a group um, that uh, has met through this big site, but now has informal private meetings on Zoom. And the reason I said that um, is because uh, at this point, Zoom meetings are a common cultural phenomenon in America. People have Zoom book clubs and Zoom family reunions and everything else, Zoom business meetings. So Zoom is familiar. I, I, no one will say, what are they doing? Um, and that's important because you want to choose the stuff in your script that you have to explain and the stuff that you don't want to explain. Um, I, there's enough here that we're going to have to explain that I didn't want to have to explain what Zoom was or how these people come together. Um, and we needed something filmable, something visual, something that actors could perform because a bulletin board where people type messages is truly anti-cinematic. Um, you know, I believe that there's a lot of possibilities for ways to make things cinematic, and yet typing into a bulletin board and waiting for a reply just didn't do it for me. So I needed to get away from that, even though that appears to be the way that this crime solving uh, site works. So um, I am going to now make this they meet. They have regular Zoom meetings. Um, so, so what we are going to see when we first meet them is a Zoom meeting, is a group meeting. And the first question that occurred to me is, is this an emergency meeting or is this a uh, regular meeting and Xena is going to essentially disrupt it with the news that George has been murdered and that uh, she has a plan for taking over his podcast. I think regular um, because, as I say here, um, once again, you're constantly thinking, what can I not have to explain in a script? Um, and since this meeting is something that not everybody does, it would be good to see a regular meeting that Xena then disrupts. Um, because then we don't have to explain it. We see them in action. Um, so it's a regular meeting. We see it. Then Xena is disrupting it with her plan. Go like that. All right. Um, okay. So that's where we've gotten up to now. Hold on. Um, I put things in green so that I remember to tell you about it. I worked on this earlier today, and I wanted to be able to show you guys what uh, I came, came to, um, because uh, honestly, the uh, me figuring out Crime Crowd was a lot of clicking around on the internet saying, oh, what about you know the Crime Club, and then checking it and discovering, no, somebody's already doing that. So, all right. Now, this comes to a new element of thinking. If this is a regular group, um, they can't have been <laughs> solved to, uh, they can't have been formed to solve George's murder because George's murder is just happening now as we hear about it. The question I had originally thought, oh, they're a group that is working on this serial killer poisoning um, case, this cold case of the serial poisoner. But I began to think, you know, maybe that's not a great idea. Um, it, that will have some ripple effects down the outline because I was thinking about how the serial killer was in this group. I'm not sure that that's worth it because what's really worth it is to, th to think that George and his podcast were so obscure that this killer 
was so obscure um, that Zena jumped on it because she wanted to take it over because that would give her credit. Uh, truthfully, if she uh, took over a successful podcast because of the death of the uh, brave podcaster who ventured against the killer, she's not really going to get all the credit. Um, she's looking for a, 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 an unknown, a person who she can take over and you get the credit for their work that no one will know that she's not in. So I thought this is actually going to be, Zena's in a lot of crime solving groups. Um, she's hunting for something to make her famous. That is what Zena's real motive is. So this case, this group is actually working on some other serial killer. Um, and she comes into it and says, guys, guys, this guy, this guy you've never heard of who's done this podcast that no one's listening to, you know, it's got like three listeners, um, that she's like, she has, um, stumbled upon this murder and she's like, we need to get on this case. Nobody knows about it. The nobody knows about it is what was ringing true to me. That, that made Zena's activity more believable to me. If she... Um, was, was, you know, if this was like the Golden State Killer and um, uh, that, that she was trying to get in on it, there's just too many other people already there. She wouldn't be able to make her claim like we want her to do with the murder. So therefore, they're working on another case. And the question is, what is this other case? And I thought, this should be some like an old fashioned serial killer, like a Jack the Ripper type, you know, back in the 1920s or even the turn of the century, something that we could afford to enjoy, because I really want to get into this theme of how we enjoy serial killers and why and whether we should. Um, so, um, the other thing about that is that it just provides some some fun variety. Um, if these people are kind of not that serious, um, and and there there might be a problem with that um, because of, uh, and I just thought of this: the 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 meth dealer is supposed to be really hungry to solve real crimes. So this this may actually not be. Um, it has to be, this has to be an obscure case. Something obscure. Um, Maurice asking, what if she's from the FBI? She, um, she being uh, Zena? Um, I don't think, first of all, I don't think um, the FBI would be involved in something like this, though. Yes, well, that's my point, is that the, um, the whole point about George's case is that it is so cold that while the FBI might have been on it 30 years ago when it's when it happened, um, it has become totally cold. No one knows or cares about this killer who stopped killing a long time ago, except George. Um, and and so therefore, the FBI will be brought into it when there, apparently there's this new apparent murder by this killer. But the, the thing we want to avoid is that this group is in some way in competition with the FBI because they would lose that competition. <laughs> the FBI would be better at this than they are. Um, so one of the things about these cold case type uh, crime sleuth groups is that they work on the ones that the police are not really focusing on. They work on the ones that the police have uh, neglected or um, that have gone cold um, that's, that's the bulk of this kind of activity. Um, so I am, I, I was sort of working on, I, I was liking this old serial killer thing just because it's a fun amount of texture. Um, there is a whole genre of turn of the century, uh, turn of the, the 20th century, serial killer stories. There's The Alienist and um, and a bunch of others. And there's uh, the, um, gosh, I don't know what the name of it is. There's a, a true uh, case in Chicago, America's first serial killer named Holmes. Um, and uh, 
So there's like a, a vibe there that I kind of wanted to use, but I don't know if we can. Um, we're just going to leave this as a puzzle to work on um, because the, the main thing is they're working on another serial killer. Um, that is important. That must be true. Um, but what case? Not sure. Um, but then Kanji has no reason to be in it. Uh, Jack the Ripper too, indeed. Jack the Ripper, the famous first serial killer to be a, a big celebrity. Um, okay, so the point is that um, I wanted to start to think about the details of um, how we are going to meet this group and establish what's really one of the main elements of this series, which is this amateur crime fighting uh, uh, club um, and the details of that. One of the things that I, that I need to do before I feel ready to write is to go through everything where I understand the concept of something. It's like, oh yeah, this is going to be this group. But then to really get down to, well, who's in the group? What, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Um, so that when I come to write that scene, I'm not floundering around trying to solve that problem because as you see, there's domino effects. Uh, you change something here, and it will make a change in a later part of the episode or in a later part of the story. In this case, uh, the question will be about Kanji, the, the meth dealer. Um, and so you don't want to be doing this when you're writing the script. You want to have a firm grasp of what the scene is about, even if you haven't worked out all the details. Um, the big decisions should be made before you um, stop outlining and start writing the rough draft. The rough draft is hard um, because you just you feel like you're at such a loss when you're writing a rough draft. And if at least you have a specific mission for each scene, at least if you have a specific plan for each scene, you can get through the deeply emotionally damaging effort of making up those first rough words of saying, oh, this is going to be the dialogue and this is going to be the description. It's hard to do that. that that's one of the most uh, emotionally vulnerable and raw parts of writing. Um, in order to make that survivable, I find uh, the best thing that I can do is to have a plan to say, I've got to accomplish this, this one thing. It's really important that I have um, Xena rallying this group. And that brought up um, a topic about that, which is, let me see if I can find it here. Did I get to it? Uh, no, I think it's up ahead, up above. Um, when, when Xena comes to this group and suggests this, this should be, news. This should not be, um, we don't want to feel like we're coming in um, and, um, hmm, I don't know how to explain this. Um, we have to be learning about things as we are seeing people do things. Um, if they are too far ahead of us, uh, it's not fun. If we can watch them get brought in, um, we tend to be more involved. If this, if this group has already been working on this case, I feel like it's going to undercut some of the um, excitement of our audience in watching this group of people stumble on this case and find a way into it. Um, but if Zena's coming in and she has to explain who George is and all of that stuff, uh, it's not going to be one scene. That's really what I what I came to realize. It's not going to be uh, one Zoom meeting. It's actually going to be a bunch of different calls and, and um, different scenes where she brings up some information, but then we cut to later that evening, somebody else has a phone call, or later that evening, someone does research on the case, or 
and we'll intercut that with the what's happening to Madeline. Um, and and that way we can um, really get involved in the uh, the process of making a commitment to get into a case because that's the big big action here. Um, so um, I really stumbled stumped myself here. Uh, I was sure that the old case would be fun. Um, but I think I, I think that may just be knocked out of the the game by the kanji element because kanji's character um, has become has become very clear to me. Um, like you said, the audience wants to be given clues that they may have to solve or string together themselves. That is exactly right. The audience wants to work. Here is something that you should really think about. The audience wants to work. When people say that watching a show or a movie is a passive experience, they are completely misunderstanding it. Um, when you are watching something um, in the active sense, you are putting everything together. You are not sure how it's going to go or what's going to happen. Um, and so every moment is an exciting piece of not necessarily the puzzle, although often the puzzle, but more of the the ride, the adventure, the what's going to happen. Um, there are things that we watch passively where we just sit back and just sort of let it pass over us. You don't want to be writing that. You don't want to, if, if possible, do not engage in that. What you want to be writing is something where the experience for the audience is, I know this person now, um, and I see that they have something they want or some problem they have to solve, and I don't know how they are going to because there are these obstacles. And so we get engaged. We're looking for what they're going to do. We are looking for the signs of what path they're going to take. And once they make a choice, we're looking for whether or not that's going to work. Um, so like I said, watching a story is a very active thing for the audience if you do it right as a writer. If you give them each piece that they need to, to move ahead, but you don't solve everything for them right away, and you don't... Um, take away the tension they feel of not knowing. Uh, it's a complicated thing. They need You need to give them um, something, that, enough that they know that they care. We don't care if we don't know. We don't care if we don't know who Madeline is and what her problem in life is. Um, but if we know too much, we really don't care. So, um, that said, uh, I don't know if we, the, the thing is, and, and I think let's let's do this thing. <laughs> it's always a little more uncomfortable for me to 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 really show you what it's like to be writing in front of you to have no idea where I am going to go with this. But that's what happens when you're uh, when you're writing is you come up to something and you say ah. Like, I really wanted to do this thing, and, and it's like a kill your darlings thing, because ah, the old-fashioned, old-time Jack the Ripper serial killer thing, that's, a, it's just appealing, but I don't think it can work. So I'm going to have to say, probably not. Um, it has to be one, one that we can have fun with. Um, so, but Kanji, what I really like about Kanji is the idea of this character who is a criminal, who is a, a lowlife in every way, and yet he is the voice of justice. He is the voice of not letting things go and being, and trying to put things right. Um, because in his mind, of course, he doesn't categorize what he's doing as a wrong, um, and and I just I just like that character too much to uh, to mess with it, um, but that means he would have to be on a, a case that's active. Um, so 
what would make a serial killer fun <laughs> who's uh, within recent history? Um, hmm. That's a good question. Maybe it can't be a serial killer? I'm not sure. Um, let's I'm just going to brainstorm here. Um, kills other criminals. <laughs> you know, the old Dexter. Uh, or, well, you see, the, the but then Kanji, no, Kanji would actually have a motive to, to fix that. Um, or it's someone whose crimes have a current effect, even though the crime is old. I'm not sure exactly what that would be, but if it's sort of like a, hmm. That's, this is interesting. Um, or, so I'm trying to think, are there, are there potential victims for this killer that would be, um, that wouldn't bother us that they're, that they're killing because that way we can have fun? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that we can, I don't know if this can be fun. I am not sure. Um, I think I'm going to put this one off from now on, uh, for for now, um, and work on some other elements of this, um, which is I want to get to the fact that George's. I, I haven't written this in yet. I just thought of it before uh, we started, um, so I hadn't had time. Is incredibly unsuccessful. This is really important. Um, he has only <laughs> killing off other artists and something. Yeah, I think that's kind of a dead giveaway. Uh, also, oh, let me put that up for you. Uh, Wolf says, maybe the killer is knocking off other artisanal soap makers uh, because yesterday I decided that that is what his profession is uh, when not murdering. Um, yeah, except, boy, is that going to be easy to find, um, you know, if, if the only thing that these victims have in common is that they're all soap makers, um, they're going to talk to all the soap makers. Um, a few listeners. So Xena is especially motivated to take it over because it will be all hers in the world's eye. Plus, the George's insignificance makes him more of an appealing target for her. So anyway, that's just, just wanted to, um, I'm actually going to move this to where we're meeting George. So I'm going to go way, way up here. Meet George working on his podcast. All right. Um, <laughs> the rest of Ted Bundy's victims. Uh, I don't want to, to mess with, um, yeah, actually, oh, that's actually interesting. That, that is, okay, this is an interesting, uh, Maria was suggesting that, um, the, the killer, the case was the rest of Ted Bundy's victims. I don't want to get into a real killer, partly because it's, painful for the, the people who are in, involved in the actual killings. Um, but you say he could be doing it that way because his mother was killed that way. Kind of. Uh, I, I wouldn't go that directly. Um, but what that does make me think of is that Kanji could have a personal um, motive for um, for hunting an old killer if there is an ancestral element to it, which also would be cool because um, there is a real problem with 
Um, um, that, uh, and actually, I believe that there's a there's a Scorsese movie that working on this topic too. Um, but uh, there's a movie called Wind River, which is phenomenal uh, about the idea that um, uh, Native American women are, are often their murders are neglected by the police. Um, and that is something that could really piss off Kanji. Um, and I am always very careful when I tread into um, uh, working, telling stories about things which are A, real, um, or B, um, talking about groups that I am not a member of because I know that I need to be um, respectful and clear and truthful about someone else's, um, someone else's problems and someone else's uh, truth. That said, I also believe that it's really, really important that we do make an effort to understand and be creative about other types of reality. I mean, I've uh, personally made stories um, about women. I did a whole movie about women and weight issues when I am not a woman, um, but I believe that you can authentically connect to um, issues as, as a person, no matter whether or not you are in that group. Um, and the idea that Kanji would be um, pissed off because of an ongoing marginalization and, and lack of respect, that's, that, that would do it. Um, huh. So anyway, that, that was where Maria, uh, the idea of um, someone's ancestors or ancestry being uh, victims is what made that connection. Um, so thank you. Uh, so, so now I have to share my credit with you guys, which is just a drag. Just kidding. Um, there's not going to be any credit on this because this will never get made. Um, uh, that's why we can do it and have fun. Um, okay. I believe that this will solve it. Something obscure. Um, I believe that that is going to work. Um, it is, and this is another thing. Um, I have a personal tendency to want to write things that appeal to me as an audience, obviously, which means something you haven't seen before, um, talking about an audience that is uh, not the obvious safe audience, or talking about topics that are original or interesting or underexplored. I don't really need to see the 9,000th, um, you know, serial killer who's, who's preying on, on women for sexual reasons. I just, it, it's, it's just too much of one thing. I don't need to see another suburban bunch of high school students get caught in a horror movie. Um, if I, you know, I'd rather see a horror movie set in an old age home. Um, so that's me. That's actually bad business. Hollywood does not usually like to go to the margins. Hollywood likes to go to the center where the money is because it's just numerically right. But I just can't help but feel that one of the ways I make my decisions on what to write is I think, hmm, that's weird. That's underrepresented. That's... Uh, perhaps dangerous or shocking or uh, makes people think, uh, maybe even makes them uncomfortable, that tends to make me more interested. Um, it will often make people who are putting down the money less interested. This has been a problem for me. Um, but you know what? Uh, I have very little to lose here, so I am sort of feeling like this is a cool idea. Um, Oh, it's Eric blames police for his feelings. <laughs> that is a great story idea. Save that for yourself, Wolf. Um, here's, here's Wolf saying uh, there's a killer who uh, blames the police for failing to catch him and therefore is knocking off inept cops 
who let killers get away with it. That's a great little story idea. Uh, it won't fit with this, but uh, because I, I've already established for myself that this killer um, kills absolutely random people. Um, the pleasure of killing is our guy's uh, meat and potatoes. That's what he wants. He wants to kill not because of the the personality or lifestyle or anything of the victim, but simply because he can. Uh, that's his monstrousness for me. Uh, that's a decision I've already made. Um, and so therefore, love the killing cops who are not good enough story. Um, hey, Michael Goncharov, happy birthday. Uh, let's all take a second to say happy birthday to Michael. Um, I am glad to be here. Uh, you know, nothing better than a gift that doesn't cost me anything. You're welcome. Um, please feel free, Michael, to ask a free birthday question or make a comment. We would love that. Um, what we are uh, working on here is I was trying to figure out the case that this group is working on before George's murder, because George's murder and the serial killer that, went, that goes with it are not on their radar um, because that will make it easier for us to tell our story. Because as Zena explains to these people her beliefs about this case, we get them. One of the things you want to do is make sure that you're not writing a story where everybody knows everything that's already going on, because then there's no way for you as an author to have anyone explain anything to anyone. Um, Maria is saying, happy birthday to Michael. Um, ah, that's interesting. Uh, when Bundy was asked why he did it, he supposedly said, I did it because I could. I really, really believe that that is the cause of a lot of crime. Um, we do bad things when we think we're going to get away with it. It's just a fact. Um, and the and the sense of power that's in my overview, I believe. Um, yeah, I have I haven't got it here. I've got it in the outline somewhere. Um, power. There we go. Yes, um, this character is a monster. He kills to feel power. Um, that is my definition of him. We don't we don't meet him yet, um, but he is murdering strangers. This is really important. Um, partly, it's important because it explains why. Uh, wow, I've got I've got a lot of stuff here that I gotta sort out. Um, okay, this killer. Uh, I'm also taking a hunk of stuff from the Unabomber. Um, there is, by the way, a phenomenal limited series about the Unabomber. Um, I don't remember. I think it's called Manhunt Unabomber. I'm not sure. Um, let's just type this in. Uh, okay. So uh, this is just a recommendation. Um, if you are looking for a really first-rate, I think it's a six-part series about hunting uh, a criminal. Um, anyway, uh, the the craftsmanship that went into that Manhunt Unabomber, I believe it's currently on Netflix, um, is a, it's, I think, a six-part series. Um, but what's amazing about it is that you are deeply um, informed about the work of the people catching and the work of the killer because he's got a philosophical uh, agenda, um, which the, the, the cool thing about this story is that they spend time um, pointing out the legitimacy of some of his ideas, despite the fact that he was a homicidal, to a certain extent, maniac who was willing to kill, if not maniac, terrorist. A, a person willing to kill to promote an idea. Um, and the the interplay where it's not it's not so simple as, oh, there's a bad guy. And then uh, truthfully, there's an episode where they explain more about his past and it's heartbreaking and brilliantly done. 
Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, Wolf has a, an argument against killers who are uh, harming for power because those people are, are harming for are all around us. So for it to be fun for me, they have to be vampires and the like. You know what? I don't disagree with you. Um, this comes back to something that I've been wrestling with all the way through on this, which is the topic of having fun with serial killers. Um, it is uncomfortable. What I want to try and do in this in this script or in this plan for the series is to confront that by having the characters involved have to confront their own fun with serial killers when they encounter a real serial killer. Um, that seems to me a fair way, perhaps uncomfortable, perhaps confusing to some who are just looking for fun, um, but that seems to me a legitimate way to handle that question. Um, also, vampires is another good way to handle that. <laughs> um, okay, I've been running for 40 minutes, so um, I'm tempted to, to run longer because it's Michael's birthday. Um, and, and let's just continue the, the props from Michael here. Um, so, um, I think I'm going to stop. Uh, Michael, happy, happy birthday. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I, uh, I will see you guys all next week um, where we will work further. I'm, I, I have to say something right here, though. Um, first of all, how cool that Michael would come here on his birthday and that all of you would, would be here um, and be involved. But also, um, I hope it's helpful to you to watch me flounder, to watch me recognize a, a plot flaw and then have to work through it. Um, and one of the most important things I think that you can, can learn here, um, whoop. happy birthday, Michael. Um, does he have any weak point that we are gliding into emphasizing with him but shouldn't? Um, at the moment, I do not know of such, um, but, um, but we definitely have to keep, keep, uh, an eye out for that. But what I wanted to say is uh, what you're going to see when you watch me go through this, um, process is you need to figure it out as you go along. And most of the figuring is done by instinct, by saying, I am willing to make this choice uh, let me see if I can find that card. Everything is a choice. And every choice has a price. So, for instance, choosing to solve the historical serial killer question about kanji by um, making it something um, politically sensitive, I'm willing to pay the price for that. I, as long as you know you're making a choice and you're paying a price, that's, that's the game. That is what creativity and writing is, is to look at this and say, you know, I feel like solving it this way. Wolf will solve it with vampires. I will solve it by having people um, sort of in a meta sense have to deal with the issue that the show itself raises. The answer is always going to be you have to live with the choices you make in your work. So ask yourself that question. Can I live with this? And do I like it? And if so, you go with that. Um, and then we're just going to end with Michael saying, thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael, for being here on your birthday. Thank you, everyone else, for wishing him a happy birthday. And with that, uh, I now do truly say, so long.